before the start of his final Six Nations in charge, Warren Gatlin said if his team beat France, they'd go on to win the championship. Four matches later, and we're now just 80 minutes away from this management team's third Grand Slam. It's huge for Wales, isn't it? I think that as a kid watching the game and it went back in the 70s and 80s, you know, the four nations, the five nations, and the six nations now has got bigger and bigger. Well, it's just a privilege to be involved and, uh, you know, it comes at a, a time of the year when, you know, it's just after Christmas and there's not much to look forward to and then you think, well, six nations is coming up. Great, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm a big part of any group that I've been. I've been a great day this year. It's just insane. It's like I'm looking more than I did in back with personal, and it's like now I've been looking glad or or glad to be. We always talk about. We believe that we've got the best stadium in world rugby. We've got the best fans in world rugby. Three weeks ago, when we played England at the stadium, uh, I've never experienced. The atmosphere like quite like it, and I'm sure now, come Saturday, it'll be uh, an atmosphere to save. I think for everyone involved in uh, you know what is going to be our last Six Nations game. It's just the emotion and and, and I can say the joy you can give to the people by you know obviously winning. <laughs> that definitely helps. <laughs> um, and we started off pretty well. Let's be honest, 2008 we got a Grand Slam straight away, so it was a great way to start. And let's hope it finishes on a high as well. When you look back and you know the Grand Slam in 08 and 2012, you know yeah, winning tournaments now and winning trophies is so much harder. You know this Six Nations uh, has been uh, pretty special. Well, this is number three against number two, and it's, it's elite level sport. And at that level, you know you have to be well prepared. You have to be tactically aware, and you have to be emotionally charged as well. And uh, Hopefully we're all those things for us come Saturday afternoon. It's my last Six Nations game for Wales. Um, so, yeah, it will be a little bit emotional, but I, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at putting them things to the back of my mind and, and being really focused on what on the job in hand. You know, this is what we live for, uh, players and coaches, and uh, I think it will be a special day on Saturday. I don't do emotion that too often, but I'm sure emotion will be at the forefront on uh, Saturday, particularly if we win. So clearly a very emotional day then for those men, but joining me now are two men who have both won Grand Slams here at the Principality, Sam Warburton in 2012 and Gordon Darcy in 2009, welcome. Sam, we'll start with you because it's now 11 years since Warren Gatland and his team led Wales to a Grand Slam in their first campaign. Can he do it again in his final as Wales coach? It would be a, a perfect sort of swan song, wouldn't it? And I think with Wales, we haven't won a championship since 2013 and it's been dominated in the last five years by Ireland and England. But Wales have, it almost seems like we've been too good not to have won the championship for six years because it's been really the three teams. It's always been between Ireland, England and, and Wales. So I do think Wales are due a championship and um, it's obviously teed up perfectly for today for Warren with his last last campaign. But it's the same for Ireland as well. It's the last campaign for, for Joe Schmidt, possibly Roy Best as well. So um, yeah, a lot of emotion from the Irish side as well. And Gordon, Warren brought you into the Irish set of doing his time as Ireland coach. As an Irishman, then, why do you think he's been success, so successful over the years? Yeah, um, it's obviously going back, uh, going back a few years. He got me, uh, he me in the uh, '99 World Cup. Um, but one of the things I think he, he's been—he's really good, and you see the way he is getting Wales together. And it, it doesn't matter what team that takes the field; they always play for each other, and that's a real, a real strength of, of any coach. They've always got the, you know, that Welsh DNA of how they play, you know, around the around the corner type of play, and then getting their backs together. But 
the way he pulls teams together and the way he pulls the uh, gets the individuals to play for each other. We saw a little bit of an, in uh, in 09 when we were trying to in the in the Lions when he was when he was involved there trying to get the uh, trying to undo the damage of the 2005 Lions. Um, and we saw that then when he went to went on to Australia um, and the, won the series. So he gets he finds whatever that magic sauce is for get play, for the players to want to just or allow them to play for each other and it's, a, it's a real attribute and it's a and it's a you know and it's not something that happens by chance he's been a he's been a very very successful coach for a very long time and um, doesn't say much um, but uh, when he does it's usually uh, usually packed with a punch and Sam I'm sure you support that view but you're one of the few pundits now who really does know what he'll be saying in the hours leading up to a match will will he have a lot to say or will he have done his talk-ins previously in the week um, yeah, I mean, he'll he'll drip feed information to the players throughout the week, but then he'll address the guys. I presume, well, like he used to always. When I was playing three hours for kickoff, and you're just about to jump on the team bus, and it'll be nothing other than talking about a Wales win, and um, just filling the guys with confidence. And that's just the way he is. And I used to love it when he spoke like that. That might be perceived as a bit of arrogance from from the outside, but you know, you know, at a top level. Everybody thinks that it's just whether you say it publicly or not. You know, you always believe you're going to win and you believe you're the best, but he just verbalizes that to the players and reinforces that to the boys. They truly believe it. So, um, yeah, he'll be saying that they're going to expect nothing else but, but a grand slam today. And I'm sure Ireland are going to definitely do everything they can to try and stop that party. It's impossible to ignore the wind swirling around us at the minute. It's only going to get worse. The roof is always a hot topic, mm. even more so this week with there being yellow weather warnings leading up to this. Gordon, is there part of you, obviously Schmidt's not here to please spectators, he's here to win, but is there part of you that just thinks, back yourself to beat us with the roof closed and I suppose allow the stadium to fulfil its potential as being one of the best in the world? What's your take on it all? Um, well, I've flavoured it open and closed. Um, I'd say you probably uh, have that question maybe through red tinted glasses there. Um, <laughs> Listen, I, I, I genuinely don't think it's going to be that big of a big of an issue. I think I got a lot of sound bites this week. I kind of did mention, you know, Warren. Whenever he says things, does it's always calculated. Joe's no different. He likes to uh, get a message across in uh, in things. And this was, you know, just an, uh, I'd say for for both coaches was a, was a nice way to take attention off the the fact that both of these guys really want to win this game. So there's so many different. Uh, I suppose on different levels that uh, what this match obviously you've got the championship for Ireland a potential championship still for Wales a grand slam for Wales but also two coaches finishing up in the Six Nations there's so many little undercurrents going on this nobody wanted to address that so it's like you know what lads let's have a chat about the roof because <laughs> it just takes it just takes the, it just takes the spotlight off what is actually really happening um, so I think that's going to be the real focus today. So who's going to take it? Is it too big an occasion for, for Wales to lose? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think if Ireland were playing at home, I'd probably back Ireland. If Wales are playing at home, I'd back Wales because there's, there's hardly anything between these teams. You know, the three teams, I know England did go away from home and that's why there's always a shock in the Six Nations with an away win. But more often than not, you know, when these teams play each other in recent years, the home team normally wins. So um, that's why I'm going to go for Wales. Would you agree with that, or do you feel that Ireland did do a really big performance and it might just happen here? Well, I thought uh, Sam was going to uh, sit on the fence completely there, and uh, <laughs> but he actually, luckily he backed. He luckily he backed. Uh, he backed Wales. Um, I think in this, like the the way this is this is panning out, the looking at France, or sorry, Wales, uh, throughout this tournament, their ability to wrestle momentum back in games and just turn it on and score a try they did it to France they did it to England that's a real real concern and uh, for from the Irish perspective and if Wales are able to do that and stay in the hunt and they just get that little bit of momentum up it'll be very very hard for Ireland to uh, get any sort of foothold in the game but as you said Ireland are due a uh, are due a performance they've started to pull things back together they got good performance against um, against the French last week it is hard away from home the home team usually have about a five or six point cushion and the way Wales are playing it's going to be very very hard I believe Ireland can win um, but they will need everything to go uh, everything to go right for them today I guess you sitting on the fence there Gordon but thank you very much for your company enjoy the game stay friends I'm sure you will I think <laughs> that's one thing we can say about the Welsh and the Irish they enjoy each other's company don't they whatever the result but actually there was a role at reversal on Friday night and it was Wales under 20s that we're hoping to stop Ireland, who'd already won the championship from sealing their first Grand Slam since 2007.
Hatchell would have been 11 years old and Ryan Elias just 10. Back in 2005, when Wales won their first Grand Slam in 27 years, beating Ireland 32-20. We sat both players down to reflect on that historic match. That is a brilliant finish. Quickest ball for Wales. How old was I? 2005. When I was year seven, I was about. Was this the brains kept? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see a super gav, mental drop goal. Gavin Henson for three. Off an Irish player. It's over. Super gav. The game is all square. Gavin Henson. You wouldn't fancy that from back there, do you? Backing yourself or? Left peg, man. Easy work. Easy work. <laughs> A fantastic right. bit of ripping work there. O'Gara, down towards that corner. Getting... Who's that? Melinda. Is it? Yeah. He's really He's going to score. Up. He is. There he is. Yeah. That's scored for Wales. He hasn't smiled since that, mind. Uh, he's a while uh, young, here, mind. Can you believe it from up front? He won't have been in that situation very often. He did take his time. That is a slow motion replay, but he did. Delay the kick, looking for extra distance. He looks a big old kick here as well. He got calves like Eli, but uh, they'll run for days. They'll run for days. Not the biggest. Not the biggest, but, uh, but they will run. Well, they'll and run a Bronco for you. Still be a hell of a kick if he gets it. Super Garvey at again. <laughs> Never in doubt back then, was it? He kick a ball, see. He spiral a ball as well, no? Martin Williams, the dive pass. Tom Shantling, Shantling for the line, Kevin Morgan, Morgan to put the seal on the win. And Kev Morgan, you a good player. Well, I think that's all over, I think it's curtains for Ireland, the heads are down, and this is a straight run, the Irish defence are drifting, the centre... Good line, that is. Yeah, good line. Bale and Doyle out as well. Yeah. I would have just tucked that up the jersey, so... No, oh, man. Yeah. Try scorer, still has the energy, one of the players... Get it off, Matt. I can run another one in there, but game safe. 32-20. Yeah. Yeah. Fair play. Sorry, I almost back. After beating Scotland at the death in Glasgow, Wales women were looking for their second win of the championship against Ireland. Knowing a win would see them finish ahead of the visitors in the women's Six Nations. Feeling. Um, the Melchior de Feta, well, he did it with. Um, 
been proud of my head. We need to war a back game back more expansive here. The Dangles person been really tonight, so yeah, really happy. Great result, you know. I thought we, we really came out there today and, and strung everything together. Our defence was outstanding, which give us which give us reward and attack, and I thought we took some really good opportunities. Our wingers took opportunities today. But our forwards did a lot of dog work as well. So an outstanding result and uh, it feels good to get that bonus point win at the end of the campaign. It's going to take one of the best performances this group has ever put together. The words of Rory Best ahead of today's match. We caught up with the island captain to find out exactly what it's like to play Wales in Cardiff. I think it's a it's a cracking stadium to play at. I think there's no doubt that it's probably one of, if not the best, stadium to, to play at in the world. We obviously have some great memories from being based there in the World Cup when we had a lot of home support. And it, you just know it's going to be a, it's a really, really tough game. When you play Wales, they're big, they're strong, they're physical, they're fit. But they also play now with this wide, expansive game. So it's um, it's a very, very challenging game. but. What you want to do when you're playing international rugby, you want to play against the best teams in the world, and, and Wales, especially after their, their autumn showing, are right up there. A lot of teams playing at home get an advantage, but whenever you, you, you have such a big stadium and such a passionate crowd, and I think it is one of the iconic weekends of in, in world rugby is home games in Cardiff and just the city centre shutting down and even the the police escort to the to the stadium being by horseback and all of that you know it's just it's a it's a great place to play but it is an unbelievably tough place to play and, and you can just see that that the Welsh boys thrive on being at home. much it means to not only us but you know the country and um, 
you know, just saying that uh, I guess none of us will ever forget and just glad we could finish off the job in such a critical way. We wanted to start well, we thought, you know, obviously with these conditions deteriorating, we could start well, it's going to be hard to pick us back and, um, you know, we just kept, uh, I guess, applying pressure, we kept taking points in there and I think Wales will be partying for a few days now. <laughs> Warren Gatland, you're wet, but you don't really care. No, not really. Um, thank you to you guys. Uh, you were brilliant today. You were brilliant here uh, when we played England. Um, the last Six Nations game, so um, it's a brilliant group of players, but uh, most importantly, it's about you guys, the fans, and this fantastic stadium. I think I speak for all the fans here. I think you've made it very, very special for everybody. An amazing experience for you as a coach and as a, as a squad member, I guess. Yeah, it was pretty. I thought we played pretty well today. So, uh, <laughs> um, roof open, roof shut. Who cares? Oh, I think they made a mistake by leaving it open. I would, if I was them. I would <laughs> but. Sum up in maybe a final sentence, I'll let you enjoy with the guys. What has this really been for you and the Welsh team? Oh, it's just uh, fantastic to, to have achieved this uh, with a group of players. Um, my whole goal when I came here was to try and put some pride back into that Welsh jersey. I think this group of players and uh, have done that over the last 12 years and uh, you know, I'm really, really proud of what we've achieved. Three grand slams for you, no one's done that before. Warren Gatlin, everybody! Slam in 14 years. Warren Gatlin, now the first ever coach to win three. How impressed were you with that performance? Oh, it was an incredible performance. I think, you know, coming here today, I was a little bit nervous. You're looking at when we've won the Grand Slam before, um, the teams that have come here, you, Wales would have been huge favourites before those games, but today, this Irish team, you know, that's the best team we've ever had to beat to win a Grand Slam, I think, and we just made them look so ordinary. It was, you know, it, you're questioning could Wales, because it hasn't been a straightforward Six Nations, you were questioning could they go to the well again you know, and just show that character and that discipline and that defence. It was just a perfect start, wasn't it? And it just didn't look back, it only looked like one winner after two minutes of the game, which when you're playing a team of that quality was an incredible performance. So, like you say, you know, Warren Gatlin's third Grand Slam, first coach to ever do that, and his team as well, you know, a team of sensation he's got around, you know, all around him, so unbelievable effort. They've won games in different ways, haven't they, during the Six Nations? You look back, the Scotland game wasn't perfect, came down to, to perhaps mental strength at times. What aspects of that game really impressed you and what made it so convincing? Well, it was just the defence again, you know. I think, you know, Joe Schmidt might rule having the, you know, the roof open because when you go behind early, it's an impossible game to chase. You know, in Cardiff, for the crow behind you, you got off to that start. So it was just that defence. So I thought the back row, Tip Rick, Navidi and Moriarty, just the work they put in to stop, you know, Ireland on the gain line. Um, and they just, like I said earlier, they made them look very, very ordinary. So, you know, you go back to that first half out in Paris, which was one of the worst halves of rugby I think we've ever seen under like Warren. Yeah, does, don't he? But he's called it, didn't he? Warren called it. He said, look, if we win that first game, he knows we get better as a tournament. And it's, it's always been a trait since he's been involved. The longer the tournament gets on, we always get better. And just a complete performance from everybody. I thought, you know, the, the backs did everything right. You know, high balls, kicking game was spot on. Defensively, you know, we were spot on. When we had our chances, we just took them. So, it, it, you know, it was a, a total performance from Wales today. In retrospect, surprised Ireland opted to have the roof open and, and did it in a way galvanise Wales even more? Yeah, whether it galvanised them, I'm not sure. You know, it's a Grand Slam game and, you know, we've been lucky really in every Grand Slam deciding game in recent years. It's always been in Cardiff and we saw a couple of weeks ago the effect the stadium has on the team, on you know, on the England team as well. They froze, they came here as big favourites, but Wales just, we, we, you know, the players got up another level and you just do feel invincible. I'm, I, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but I'm pretty sure you speak to the Welsh players today. They would have come to the ground today feeling unbeatable and they just went on and, and carried on. And like, you, like I said earlier, you know, if you make the decision to have the roof open on conditions like this, if you don't get off to a good start and you're chasing the game, against our Welsh defence, you've got no hope, it doesn't matter who you are, so, you know, Wales move up to second in the world now, it's another Grand Slam and it's 14 unbeaten, which is just an unbelievable performance. 
And Warren immediately post-match referred to the players and how much credit is due to the likes of Alan and Jones and, and others. But he arrived, he got a Grand Slam in his first year. He's now bowing out of his final Six Nations with a Grand Slam. D does he get the credit he deserves, do you think, as a, as a tactical coach and in other ways? I think he went through a sticky period a few years ago where there was question marks over, you know, where has he been here too long? Um, have, have, have Wales been worked out? But he's almost built a third team. I think he's more or less had three teams since he's been in Wales. And, you know, what they've done over the last 18 months, they've just evolved. They play, score some fantastic tries. Yes, it's been built on defence. We look at the tries they scored up in Scotland. They look at the try Corey Hill scored to go through 34 phases. You know, the Josh Adams try as well, the crossfield kick. So I just think they've evolved. They've got a number, you know, a great group of players. Um, and he just, yeah, he, without a doubt now, he'll get the credit he does deserve because, you know, for whatever reason, maybe in a few years ago there were question marks, but there can be no doubt that now he's, he's without doubt the best, greatest Welsh course we've ever had. And how quickly will the, will the focus turn to the World Cup? It'll be a few messy few days. <laughs> I hope you've got to <laughs> not enjoy next week. Yeah, not next week. You've got to enjoy these next couple of days this next week. Um, for the players, they'll be back the regional rugby as well. But yeah, they'll, they'll have time to dwell on this now. and. Ultimately, this will give us belief going into the World Cup. Uh, the last couple of World Cups have shown the team who won the Six Nations have actually struggled in the next World Cup, so I'm sure Warren will be well aware of that. But the beauty of this coaching team, they've been to two World Cups before, they've been fairly successful in them as well, so they know exactly what to do in that build-up. So, yes, yeah, so, you know, they're in a fantastic place.
Benjamin, Wales beating Ireland 25-7. Few teams have beaten the Irish in the past two years. Few still have done so, so convincingly. The perfect Six Nations swan song for Warren Gatland. All eyes will now turn to Japan.